The top 12 richest people in the world, if you've ever played fantasy baseball or football, you know how quickly your team members value can fluctuate, but did you know that this applies to billionaires, as well? We're surprised no one started a fantasy wealth draft yet, since the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, which ranks the world's richest people depending on their estimated net worth at the end of each trading day, can make for some pretty entertaining reading if you check in on a regular basis to see who's gone up and who's gone down. This was an accurate ranking of the dozen wealthiest people in the world from richest to slightly less wealthy. Note that the rankings shift regularly, particularly among the middle slots, and there is even a possibility that someone at the lower end may have dropped out of the top 12 to be replaced by whoever's currently occupying 13th or 14th place. Pick your favorites, place your bets, pour your drinks, and let the billionaire games begin. Because hey, we might as well turn the ever-widening wealth gap into a spectator sport and get a few laughs out of it as of this. These are the top 12 richest people in the world. Actually, we're going to be in production hell. And uh, <laughs> as the saying goes, if, you, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> Elon Musk currently occupying the top spot is Twitter's controversial owner Elon Musk. Musk, according to PayWizard, holds in an estimated $384,615,384.62 per day, which means that he's making over $200,000 per minute, even while he sleeps. Most cannot even wrap their head around that kind of money. According to CBS News, much of his wealth comes from the stock he owns, and sometimes sells, in the companies he's founded, primarily Tesla and SpaceX. You had that third failure in a row. Did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Musk's also got a few billion in assets from Boring Company, a very dull-sounding organization that constructs tunnels. This is what Elon Musk claims is the future of transport. So we are here in Las Vegas to check it out. People in Teslas would be transported into this huge network of tunnels and they'd be transported at more than 100 miles an hour using its autonomous features. This emphatically isn't that. For one, as you can see, these aren't robots driving these cars, these are real humans. Secondly, they're not going at 100 miles an hour, not even close. They might be going at 30 miles an hour, and they're certainly not being transported from above. Plus, there's Twitter, which might, in time, come to earn him some serious pocket change. If you're pea green with envy, though, keep in mind that Musk has known loss and failure, too, of a sort. In early 2020, he was worth a mere $25.6 billion, something that granted him mid-card billionaire status at best. By late 2021, however, his personal wealth soared to $340 billion, but he's now dropped back to a more, um, modest $238 billion, as per Bloomberg's latest check. This means that he lost about 35% of his wealth in a single year, and yet it ultimately still did him knock him off the top spot as the world's richest person. If somebody is doing something that is useful to the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know, um, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, and, and frankly, even if it's something, if it's like um, just a little game. Needless to say, Musk will probably continue to be the number one draft pick in any fantasy billionaires league. Bernard Arnault, not quite such a big name, at least not in the U.S., is the second-place billionaire, France's own Bernard Arnault. I am very competitive. I always want to win. The success of uh, my group is based on a combination of creativity and organization. Today, Louis Vuitton is by far the largest and number one luxury brand in the world. Every competitor is trying to imitate. Arnold, who actually held the top spot on the world wealth charts in December 2019 and again in May 2021, is currently worth about $196 billion, as per Bloomberg. 
Arnold makes his billions the old-fashioned way, by selling rich people stuff to other rich people. He heads up LVMH Moat Hennessy Lewis Wooten, the luxury goods conglomerate that brings us Moat and Chandon Champagne, Hennessy Cognac, and Lewis Wooten Fashion, as well as Dom Paragnon, Taguer, Fendi, Christian Dior, Givenchy, and other high-dollar brands. Had the idea uh, of a luxury group. And at the time, I was very much criticized for it. I remember people telling me it does not make sense to put together so many brands. You know the brands. It's Givenchy, it's Fendi, it's even Thomas Pink, Sephora. Sephora, he uh, again was completely ahead of the game. I remember when it first opened. And... According to The Focus, Arnold lives in a 17th century Parisian townhome whose 20,000 plus square feet are packed with modern art, originals, B.S. Hour, by such prominent names as Basquiat, Andy Warhol, and Picasso. He does, of course, own several chateaus in the countryside, as well as a mansion on St. Tropez, his beach cottage, no doubt, an entire island in the Bahamas, and a collection of wineries around the world. Jeff Bezos unlike some other people on this list. Pour préparer une carrière, déjà ce qui est important, c'est d'avoir un objectif. Moi je vais dans l'idée d'être entrepreneur. Donc je crois que chaque individu a en lui une idée. Et je, ce qu'il faut c'est extérioriser cette idée, c'est la trouver de façon à se sentir le plus vite possible, bien dans ce qu'il fait, et de pouvoir démarrer très vite dans une voie qui pourra par la suite lui donner la plénitude. Jeff Bezos built his fortune by selling all of the things to all of the people. The output measure, the, if you look at the financial success of Amazon and the, the stock, I own 16% of Amazon. Um, Amazon's worth roughly a trillion dollars. That means that what we have built over 20 years, we have built $840 billion of wealth for other people. And that's great. Yes, in principle, monopolies stink and we should all be supporting local mom and pop businesses, but in actual practice, it's just so easy and convenient, and, admit it, also quite fun, to buy everything we need on Amazon and have it delivered overnight for free. While Bloomberg says that Bezos is worth a respectable $157 billion, Fast Company noted in 2022 that he's lost even more of his wealth than Musk has. Over the past few years, his net worth has tumbled by 50%, and an earnings report from the same year from Amazon seems to indicate he may stand to lose a few billion more. While we're all still buying what the company is selling, we're not doing it to quite the extent they'd expected. The real cause behind his wealth leak, though, seems to be the fact that Amazon shares are declining in value as profits fail to live up to expectations. Easy to have ideas. It's very hard to turn an idea into a successful product. There are a lot of steps in between and it takes persistence, relentlessness. So I always tell people who are, you know, who think they want to be entrepreneurs, it's you need a combination of stubborn relentlessness and flexibility. Bill Gates is yet another billionaire whose name we all know, and whose products many of us use on a daily basis. Uh, mostly I love software. Uh, I do remember at the private school I went to, there were other kids whose families were better off, like they had a Porsche or something, but it wasn't that, that big of a deal. My thing was that I just loved doing software, I loved hiring people, and I was stunned when it ended up being so valuable. The Microsoft founder got rich the new fashioned way, by first creating a product and then very successfully convincing us we couldn't possibly live without it. Competition. Uh, and it looks like the only sure winner is going to be the customer. I'm not sure fear is a worthwhile emotion in business. Uh, we, Microsoft has a uh, pretty good track record of doing great products. And so people are probably trying not to underestimate us. If that causes fear, uh, then 
then maybe it's appropriate. In fact, only those who are around Gates' age or older may be able to remember what life was like back in the dark ages before every middle-class home had a PC or three. Today, Gates is worth some $137 billion. Well, our kids are young enough that the key focus is helping them you know, enjoy learning, uh, get a great education. All of them will pick careers that aren't related to software philanthropy. They will strike out in their own direction and be great you know, in their own way, whatever it is. Making him the world's fourth richest man, but he doesn't seem to mind. In fact, he has plans to become even less wealthy in the future. While Gates has his detractors, what prominent person does not, one thing you can't accuse him of is being ungenerous. As per HNGN, his divorce from his former wife Melinda may result in a settlement of assets worth over $65 billion, and in July 2022 he also tweeted out the news that he'd be transferring $20 billion of his own money to the Gates Foundation. In a follow-up tweet, he noted, As I look to the future, I plan to give virtually all of my wealth to the Foundation. I will move down and eventually off of the list of the world's richest people. I know we didn't actually graduate, right? Oh, that is the best part. They actually give you a degree. You don't even have to go to class? No, no, you just put that degree on your resume and it looks great. Can you help me figure out what I'm going to say? Yeah, we should work on it together. Let's go get some more snacks. All right. Larry Ellison from the charitable to the questionable. I said, oh my God, we can beat IBM to market because IBM d d doesn't believe in their own idea. Oracle founder and majority stakeholder Larry Ellison, whose $133 billion has him in the number five slot. On Bloomberg's billionaire list, owns 98% of the Hawaiian island of Lanai, which he bought for $300 million in 2012. We're all a bunch of kids that grew up with the business. And uh, we weren't kids anymore, and the business wasn't a little business anymore, it was a big business, and we had to replace virtually all of senior management. If the name of the island rings a faint bell harking back to your elementary social studies days, that's because it was once the place where Dole grew its pineapples. Now the island is a rich man's private playground whose longtime residents are being driven out and small. Businesses shut down. Those island residents who do remain are usually in Ellison's employ and are living there on sufferance as losing your job generally means that your lease is up, as well. While Ellison may not be known for his charity towards the less fortunate, he is a big donor to the Republican Party and was supportive of efforts to decertify the 2020 election results. He's also a financial backer of the America's Cup Yacht Race and the Indian Wells Tennis Tournament. Wealthy though he may be, Ellison's own accountant once warned him that he needed to get a better grasp on budgeting and personal finances. His spending habits tend toward the unsustainable. She accused me of being irresponsible, and she told me I lacked ambition. She kicked me out, and then she divorced me. This was a pivotal moment in my life. Larry Page was a co-founder, along with Sergey Brin, of Alphabet, the holding company whose primary product is Google. Be something that somebody who becomes rich or is, could do anything, you gotta be excited about working on that for 10 years. So you gotta have a big enough goal that you, know, you attract the best people and you retain them and you keep them focused. And in my experience, you don't go wrong. You know, Maybe you don't hit it next year, or maybe you fail entirely and you discover something more exciting to work on. As might be expected, owning a good chunk of any company whose name has become a verb and whose products are something most of us make use of a few zillion times a day is a pretty lucrative gig. Bloomberg reports that Page's assets currently weigh in at $119 billion. While Page does not own his own private island, he does now make his official residence in a country that's known for. I mean, this is kind of one of the most exciting things I've seen in a long time. Uh, the guy who started this company, Demas, has a neuroscience and a computer science background. Yeah. You know, he went back to school to get his PhD to study the brain. And so I think we're seeing a lot of exciting work going on that sort of crosses computer science and neuroscience in terms of really understanding what it takes to make something smart. Being popular with paranoid billionaires concerned about societal collapse. Page, an American by birth, moved his family to New Zealand during the pandemic, and CNBC says that he was granted citizenship status in 2021 for a mere $7 million, 
which is to be invested in New Zealand businesses and or real estate over a three-year period. I think I want to make the world a better place. I mean, I think that's a pretty generic answer, but in several ways. One is through Google, the company, and in terms of giving people access to information. And, you know, I'm sure I'll do other endeavors, too, in terms of technologies and businesses. It seems as if Page may be well on the way to fulfilling this obligation, as he's invested in a Kiwi accounting software startup named Zero and has been snapping up various properties across the island nation, can't have too many bunkers come the zombie apocalypse, after all. Sort of figured out, given all that data, I thought it would take a couple of weeks. And I told my advisor that. And he just sort of laughed at me. And of course it took him a year or two. But at the end of that, we had a way to rank web pages, and no thoughts to search at all. And eventually, search entered the picture, and you know the rest. And that became Google. So I'd like to encourage everyone to follow their dreams. Warren Buffett, yet another of the world's most admirable billionaires. Yes, those words feel weird to us, too. Is Warren Buffett, someone Gates outed as a major donor to the Gates? Maybe not everyone in our audience actually knows your story when you first started. Picture Omaha in 1937. I was seven years old and uh, uh, no air conditioning, so the summers were hot and humid. People uh, went out on their lawns at night just to try and cool off, and I got the idea that maybe I could sell them what you would call soft drinks and we called pop. Although the foundation bears our names, Basically half our resources have come from Warren Buffett, according to an accompanying infographic, Buffett has contributed a total of $35.7 billion from 2006 to 2022. Being successful at almost anything means having a passion for it. If you see somebody with, with even reasonable intelligence and a terrific passion for what they do and who can get people around them to march, even when those people can't see over the top of the next hill, uh, things are gonna happen. Counting the other charities he supports, Buffett's charitable giving as of June 2022 was $48 billion, something that Forbes says may well make him the all-time philanthropic champ. I get to do what I love. I mean, and it doesn't get any luckier than that. If, 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 if you can spend your lifetime, right. and I'm 80 now, and doing things you love every single day. I mean, I, I would be doing what I did, what I do now, and I would have done it in the past. If the payoff had been in seashells or shark teeth or anything else, it, it, if you can go to work every morning, I tap dance to work, you know, and I come down and I, I every day's exciting. Uh, so that is luck. Buffett is at a comfortable $118 billion. As befits such a charitable man, he built his wealth by helping others build theirs. Bloomberg says that his investment group, Berkshire Hathaway, has produced almost a 20% compounded gain in value every year since 1965. This is a book that first came out in 1949, The Intelligent Investor by Ben Graham. When I read this book, it changed my life. Anytime the market takes a sharp dive and you get tempted to sell or something, just pull out this book and reread it. What's more, a simple Google search or visit to the public library will gain you invaluable free investing advice straight from the chairman's mouth. Need a good place to start 45 years worth of shareholder letters is available to download from the Berkshire Hathaway website. I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. I like to buy the world a coke and keep it company. Mark Zuckerberg, a man that needs no introduction. When we first launched, we were hoping for, you know, maybe 400, 500 people. Harvard didn't have a Facebook, so that's the gap that we were trying to fill. And now we're at 100,000 people, so who knows where we're going next. Um, we're hoping to have many more universities by the fall, hopefully over 100 or 200. And from there, we're going to launch a bunch of side applications, which should keep people coming back to the site and maybe could make something cool. Mark Zuckerberg is, of course, known for starting Facebook at the mere age of 19. Now the co-founder and chief executive of Meta Platforms, whose acquisitions include Instagram, WhatsApp, and Oculus VR, Zuck's net worth sits at a cool $117 billion, according to Bloomberg. Out of the bed, you go to the bathroom. Oh, I don't, uh, no, the first thing I do is look at my phone. Oh, you look at the phone first, <laughs> <Yes>. okay. That's <laughs> yes. interesting. Yeah. I do that too. I, I look at Facebook. 
right. uh, to see to see what's going on in, in the world. Right, um, right. And I and I check uh, my messages. I look at Messenger and WhatsApp. Interestingly, according to a December 2015 seconds filing, the tech giant plans to give away a whopping 99% of his shares throughout his life. No one deserves to have that much money, right? I mean, that's not like. I don't, it's, you know, I think if you do something that's good, you, you, know, you get rewarded, but I, but I do think some of these, um, some of the wealth that can be accumulated um, is unreasonable. A notable philanthropist, Zuckerberg has donated $100 million of his Facebook shares to the Newark, New Jersey, public school system, while he also gave away $36 million to the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. Started Facebook? I run it, and I'm responsible for what happens here. While he was still relatively young, Zuckerberg's rise was swift. Launching Facebook in his Harvard dorm room, he didn't anticipate the social networking platform to garner so many users. So he quickly left his studies and moved to Silicon Valley. In 2004, he received $500,000 in funding from Peter Thiel, and by the end of the year, it was reported that the website was on its way to having 1 million users. In his private life, the Facebook co-founder married Priscilla Chan in 2012, with whom he now shares a daughter. In May 2011, they purchased a 5,617 square foot home in Palo Alto, California, valued at $7 million. The house boasts five bedrooms, five bathrooms, a saltwater pool, and a glassed-in sunroom, among other luxuries suited for a billionaire. It's not personally the thing that I'm super excited about building um, for a number of reasons. One is I come at this from the perspective of how do we connect people better. So, you know, having some, some kind of uh, information in the corner of your eye is a different, is, is just not as powerful from my perspective as being able to have like hologram Marquez here with me um, and, and being able to like to, to interact and, and kind of share objects or, or play a game physically together. Steve Ballmer, as Bloomberg tells us, was hired by Microsoft back in 1980, at which time he was the 30th employee on the books. And I think you want to understand people's ability to problem solve. I always gave this problem to kids. I'm thinking of a number between one and a hundred. You can guess, after each guess I'll tell you whether high or low. You get it the first guess, I'll give you five bucks, four bucks, three, two, one, zero. You pay me a buck, you pay me two, you pay me three. In time, however, he worked his way up and became the company's CEO, in the process earning himself a tidy little fortune. While he resigned from that position in 2014, he still owns a fair chunk of shares in the company and his assets, mostly those shares, afford him a net worth of $117 billion. I remember when I called home and my dad said, what the heck is software? Um, he'd actually been involved installing Wang systems, old word processors, but what software? And then my mom said, why would a person ever need a computer? Now, today you'd say that's crazy, but it wasn't crazy in 1980. But they said, okay, okay, we hear you, we hear you. Uh, if it doesn't work out, you go back to business school, right? I said, right. In addition to Balmer's Microsoft shares, he also owns the LA Clippers basketball team. Although we're not entirely sure whether this is a shrewd investment, the team itself has a value of $3.73 billion, or a billionaire's plaything. Probably a bit of both since it's undoubtedly a lot more fun sitting courtside at Clippers games than enduring another Microsoft shareholders meeting. The same year he purchased the basketball team, he also founded Balmer Group with his wife, Connie. Big step was doing Surface. And, and it, you know, I love our partners. I love HP, I love Dell, I love oh, Lenovo yeah. and the like. But the truth is there are things you can do and you can be more complete in your vision. Your feedback loop is tighter. Customers are telling you what they like and don't like much more quickly. And Sergey Brin, who was born in the Soviet Union, moved to the U.S. when he was six years old. So then I started building a search engine, and Sergey also came on very early, um, probably in late 95 or early 96, and started, was really interested in the data mining part. And, um, you know, Basically, we thought, oh, we, we should be able to make a better search engine this way. Because search engines didn't really understand the notion of, you know, which pages were more important. You know. He did his undergrad work in computer science and math at the University of Maryland, but then moved out to California to attend grad school at Stanford. There he met Larry Page, 
and together they created Google, quite literally out of a garage, why does no one ever invent anything in a living room, today he's one of the directors of Alphabet, the parent company, and his shares in the company make up much of his $113 billion fortune. I think the most important thing, uh, if you're going to build a search engine, is to have a really good fun corpus to start out with. Uh, in our case, we use the World Wide Web. He's also now involved in overseeing the company's ventures into robotics. The one thing Bryn does have that his former partner, along with most of the other billionaires on this list, does not, is a nice juicy scandal. In fact, this scandal is one he shares with alpha billionaire Elon Musk, Musk is suspected of having had an affair. With Bryn's now ex-wife, Nicole Shanahan, although, of course, he denies the allegations. Bryn, however, seems to have sold off all the shares he once owned in Musk's companies as well as divorcing Shanahan. I mean, it comes down to some preference, some intuition, and, and mostly, truthfully, it comes down to luck. Uh, but, you, but if you never try, you know you will not succeed. And by trying in areas that you think might be fruitful, then eventually uh, you are likely to end up with a success. Hello Carlos Slim, as Bloomberg refers to him, or Carlos Slim Hello, as Forbes would have it, is the son of Lebanese immigrants who is now Mexico's wealthiest man. At the moment he has $95.8 billion worth of assets, and since German Laria, the number two Mexican national on the Bloomberg's billionaires list, has a mere $31.9 billion to his name, he's likely to maintain that number one status. Oh, slim day. You get up early? Uh, I get uh, early. I work. My work many times, well, is to know what is happening around, uh, look the news, but also talk with the people. Slim. Hello, S Wealth comes from a fairly diverse portfolio, including a controlling stake in America Mobile, which is Latin America's premier cell phone carrier, as well as Grupo Carso, which invests. Where you can navigate free, completely free, all, all what we are doing is free. We have now, they, I think they, they told me a few days ago, 3,500, 3,500, 3, mm -hmm. but we will grow as much as necessary. And now we need to move, to move that we're doing that in schools and other places, to, to rural areas, we need to move to rural areas. But also, instead of lending a book, we lend a laptop for 15 days. Heavily in construction projects throughout Mexico. He also owns Cirrus Mexico. Insider notes that, unusually for a billionaire, Slim still lives in the same house he and his family have occupied for four decades, a modest six-bedroom affair. He also doesn't own any private planes or yachts but he does have a nice art collection. Still, even this isn't something he keeps to himself, as he did establish the Museo Salmea, a Mexico City art museum named after his late wife. Not only is the museum not for profit, but it also doesn't even charge admission. Success is not being recognized by others. It is not about an external opinion. It is about an internal state of being. It is the harmony between the soul and our emotions that are fed by love, family, friendship, authenticity, and honesty. Mukesh Ambani also cracks into the top dozen. Ambani, a Stanford graduate, has a $95.8 billion fortune that comes in part from Reliance Industries, which is the biggest oil refining complex on the planet. Everything I am today is because of reliance. Everything I know today is thanks to reliance. This evening, I want to share with you the most important lessons I have learned from my father during this phenomenal journey. The first lesson is courage. He's also made more than a few bucks off of cellular service provider Geo and is now making plans to start offering financial services as well. Ambani spends his billions on, for one thing, a 27-story home, complete with a private movie theater, health spa, ballroom, ice cream parlor, temple, three floors of indoor gardens, an indoor snow room with artificial snowmakers inside the walls, three helipads, six-story parking garage with room for 168 cars, and rooms for 600 live-in servants, that's 100 servants for each member of the Ambani family and residence. 
While the home was valued at $400 million back in 2014, some estimates put its value at well over a billion now, and Lifestyle Asia calls it one of the most expensive homes in the world. Today, Gujarat is fully 5G enabled, something that most of the world does not yet have. This will make Gujarat a global leader in digital data platforms and AI adoption. 5G enabled AI revolution will make Gujarat's economy more productive, more efficient, and more globally competitive. Ambani also owns a 300-acre estate called Stokes Park. Outside of London which has been featured in two James Bond movies, plus, of course, he's got the usual billionaire accessories such as a number of Bentleys, Rolls-Royce, and Mercedes-Benzes, as well as a private plane.